Even though it's been hardly, merely, just barely two and a half years since I last reviewed an affordable multi-piece soundbar system, my intuition is that it's time to follow up. My last attempt at this was a fight video between the Klipsch Cinema 600, the Klipsch flagship bar at the time, and the Sony HTG 700. I was delighted by the Cinema 600 and deeply disappointed by the Sony. Not mad. Disappointed. The Cinema 600, despite lacking some increasingly common technologies found on the G700, has four additional drivers, it charms with a natural earthy audio profile, and perplexingly, still has one of the best submodules amongst all the soundbar offerings, including the flagships. Ever since that review, I've perhaps lazily kept the Cinema 600 as a placeholder in my heart for best $500-ish soundbar kit value. But today, I'm challenging that. No safe spaces. I'm putting that budget-oriented soundbar system-shaped hole in my heart back on the market. And I'm going to see if the new 2023 Samsung Q600C fits in there. So why am I interested in this one? Well, I keep coming to the conclusion that the flagship version of Samsung Soundbar Q-Line is the best official soundbar system money can buy. So I'm duly curious how much of that prestige is sprinkled amongst the less famous family members. And just looking at specs, I sense this product will give the Cinema 600 some trouble. So let's see if this endearing piece of Americana can hack it in the ring with this cutthroat, audio company gobbling, cold-hearted corporate ninja monster. It should be interesting. Where's my scoreboard? There you are. The price. The Samsung Q600C mostly seems to be around $450. I have seen it as low as $400 on Amazon. The Cinema 600 on Klipsch's website is $550, which seems high historically. On retail sites in the US, you can find it between $400 and $500, so maybe don't buy direct from Klipsch. In the US at least, we got something like price parity. Both are relatively affordable in the soundbar kit space. Each get a point. Gotta make sure the scoreboard works. Design and build, the Q600C. The Q-Line bars all share the same style, so the Q600C shares the Q990C style, but is far more adorable. You have the same eight sides with all but the back and bottom covered by a grill. The ends here are a slap in the face, no exaggeration, with this cheesy, light, semi-reflective gray plastic covering. If you're going to go with a completely unnecessary shape for brand consistency, just go with it. Don't make it any weirder than it has to be. Where's the outcry on this? There are physical clickety buttons on top, a standard LED scrolly display all the way on the right, and ports on the bottom and side. The power cord has a brick, so it's a little more difficult to casually tuck it away, and it isn't as easily replaceable as one of these generic power cords. The sub, it's your typical gray MDF container. Like the bar, it has been dramatically shrunk from the prestigious dimensions of the Q990C sub, which never seemed all that prestigious until encountering this object. The sub does not adopt the Q990BC design, but it does take first place in the generic pageant. It's a straight up cuboid, no rounding or edge shaving, with a fabric cover up front. It looks like something that's been returned. The Cinema 600 soundbar. I mean, you either want your soundbar wrapped up in a scratchy ickiness magnet or not. Fair warning, there is no grill under the cloth, so you got a tear risk if you allow toddlers to charge at your soundbar with scissors or whatever. Um, you shouldn't let them run with scissors. And if you have clawed creatures in your house that you let run around like animals, well, good luck with that one. Anyway, the bar body is made largely of wood material, which you can't see, but you can see these wooden end caps. And of course, you have your, I'd go far as to say, iconic Tractrix horn tweeters on the ends. 
that gives the cinema series a recognizable and consistent theme, not only with other cinema bars, but nearly every other Klipsch speaker. The Cinema 600, while certainly not a huge or even a hefty bar, is taller and significantly wider than the Q600C, though it's not as deep, in part due to the no upward firing drivers. There is a primitive front display that shines right on through the itchy sweater and some more display indicators on top. Uh, the top. While we're up here, we'll find clickety buttons you might want to press if you made the journey to check out the top display. The ports are in back here with the typical Clip Cinema series redundant diagramming to really, really help you find your way around. The sub is a big block of wood. It just dwarfs the Q600C sub. It's not close. It's hard to overstate this. Though it comes across as a monolith, its visage is softened with shaved edges and a dark warm stain with graining. Not gonna sugarcoat it. We got a bit of a mess over here on the styling front. Um, gonna just pay off both systems with a point to avoid any more of a seam. Driver array. The Q600C is a 360 watt 3.1.2 channel system with nine drivers, eight on the bar, and one 6.5 inch woofer on the sub. I will admit there is some good stuff going on for a budget bar in terms of driver count and arrangement. First, you got a woofer plus tweeter center channel, which bodes well for vocal clarity. The left and right channels are both woofer tweeter pairs as well. For comparison, the Sony HTG 700 that did not fare well against the Cinema 600 had merely three woofers on the entire bar bad. Perhaps the most interesting thing going on are these acoustic beam tweeters up top. Not normal. That spread sound more effectively than traditional tweeters, resulting in a broader soundstage. Now, I've only reviewed soundbars with this kind of mechanism in the front. So think the Bose 7 and 900 and the Sony HTA 7000. So this is an unusual engineering choice, period. Especially when placed up top, and even more especially in this price range. It totally piqued my interest when I noticed it. The sub module has a 6.5 inch woofer, I think I already mentioned that, and it does fire forward. The Cinema 600 is a 600 watt 3.1 channel system. It has seven drivers all pointed straight at you. Nothing happening on the sides or top. So woofer tweeter pairs on the left and right, and three drivers in the center two woofers, and a tweeter. This front of the bar arrangement is almost exclusively reserved for flagship bars. For instance, it's the same front driver arrangement as the Sonos Arc. More context on the Tractrix horns. Uh, they look funny on purpose, and that purpose is to keep sound forward focused, which makes sense because they were designed initially for traditional stereo pairs, not for spatial speakers. The sub has a 10 inch downward firing woofer for reference that's two inches bigger than the Q990C sub. Per usual, the better sounding system will get worked out in my backyard octagon. My wife hates it. No points in this category. Codex support, let's start with the 600C. So everything pretty much, up to Dolby True HD and DTS HD Master Audio, along with the embedded 3D audio metadata, Dolby Atmos and DTSX. The Cinema 600, almost the exact opposite of everything. They could have gone full nothing, but they lost their nerve. So you're stuck with just lossy Dolby Digital and stereo PCM. For context, you're not even gonna have full compatibility with Dolby Digital Plus, which is still a lossy format that Netflix, Max, Prime, Disney Plus all use. So let's completely forget about the lossless formats discussed 20 seconds ago. The good news is, as long as your TV is not spitting out DTS, you should hear something. Otherwise, well, you're gonna find out just how ironic the cinema branding really is. If your Blu-ray has a DTS track, you are not completely lost. There is a really good chance your Blu-ray player has a setting to convert DTS to Dolby. But this is obviously associated with sound quality loss and lameness. Samsung three points for not doing what Klipsch did. 
Ports, the Q600C, eARC and HDMI input and optical. What this means is that you can get all of the supported audio formats, even the lossless stuff, either through an eARC TV or the HDMI input on the bar. It's a big deal for those on a holy mission to conserve their audio signal. As an alternative to eARC, you do have optical, but don't use that. It limits what you can do with the TV remote, but more importantly, it severely limits audio data transfer rates. So forget about any of those cool 3D audio formats or lossless multi-channel audio. Beyond stereo. Okay, the Cinema 600, less impressive. An ARC port, the old fashioned non-enhanced version, and there is no HDMI input. This would be particularly bad if there were any codecs that would benefit from higher rate audio transfers. There aren't, so the port desert is kind of a mute point, except for the case when it's just logistically easier to plug into the bar. So Klipsch, being music oriented, gives you two wired options for getting your just audio on the bar, which includes your traditional analog 3.5 millimeter aux in and optical. Now this optical input is different than the C and many other bars because it's completely separate from the ARC input. On the 600C, the optical and eARC port are considered the same input. So if both are plugged in at the same time, optical just gets ignored. With the Cinema 600, optical is its own discrete input. So when you switch to optical from ARC, you can enjoy your CD or music streamer. There are two other ports relevant to system expansion, which I'll cover later on. Samsung gets three points for offering ports critical for a contemporary home theater audio experience. Klipsch, one point for expanding the utility of the bar on the music front. Wireless playback. Sound adjustments, the Cinema 600. Perhaps the biggest sound adjuster, which is still somewhat understated, is the virtual surround mode. When this mode is active, the tweeters are heated up a bit and the sound spread does come across a little wider. Let's just say 15%. And you get this wisp of a 3D effect, which is not an official capacity of this bar. Bottom line, it's a fairly light DSP effect. I was fine leaving it on. So despite this piece of propaganda, which was true at one point or is planned, but is not now the case, for EQ handling, you're limited to a handful of EQ presets, which are all but one a black box. So flat, music, movie, game, sports, and news. The profiles are not wildly different. Movie does seem to emphasize bass a bit, making the sound a bit darker. Music had a similar bass effect as movie, but with some mid-treble boosting to make the whole profile a bit more punchy. I typically kept it on flat. You have a night mode and three levels of dialogue boost. This multi-level approach seems to be largely exclusive to Klipsch. Room tuning. The bar won't tune to the room, but you can adjust your expectations for what a tuned bar in your room should sound like some free but valuable advice with this system. The Q600C, fewer knobs than the Q990C, but more than the Cinema 600. So we have the familiar EQ modes like adaptive mode, but in this case, I don't sense it's based on any microphone based audio processing. Surround sound mode uses all the drivers, but lays off on some of the more extreme DSP funny business. Game Pro, as always, exaggerates the soundstage making all your violent video games that much more traumatizing. And Standard, where the system uses only the channels requested by the audio. So stereo signals will use left, right, and bass. Manual EQ controls are limited to bass and treble, no matter the sound mode, and channel adjustments are limited to center, height, and woofer. Looking for a room tuning feature? Look elsewhere, that costs more. The Q takes this a bit more seriously, so two points for the Q600, one point for the Cinema 600. Controls, the Q600C. Well, you have the bar buttons and the remote. That's it, no app support. You have four bar buttons, including power, volume up, down, and input. 
The remote is exactly the same as the Q990C remote, which is particularly relevant because there is no app, so most of the deeper level sound adjustments will require the remote. I say most because if you're connected to a Samsung TV, you can adjust sound modes and connect a Q-Symphony via the TV menu. The Cinema 600, you have the bar, remote, and app. Bar controls, you have power input and volume up down, identical to the Q600C. The remote, it has a sturdier feel than most soundbar remotes. It's backlit, which is nice when you're fumbling around in the dark. And it's very simple in that it doesn't take you down any rabbit holes or menus. It's really what you see is what you get. The Klipsch app is improved over the initial version a few years ago. It does pretty much everything the remote does and more. So for instance, it's the only way to change EQ modes. It's also where you're gonna wanna go to upgrade. Note that this app, as with other Bluetooth connected apps, is totally skittish. If you background it, it's gonna disconnect right away. So it's not extremely sophisticated for sure. Gonna throw Klipsch a point for the app. The display. Klipsch does it strange. There is an ambient display up front that gives you input information via color and other information like volume, bass, dialogue level via a number of highly illuminated LEDs. There are other state indicators up top, which include input signified by color, Dolby codec active, virtual surround, dialogue, and night mode all of which you will never see because you can't see them while sitting. Note that both displays can be dimmed or turned off, which is the most important part of a display. The C, it's your typical scrolling monochrome fare. Nothing special other than it's mostly readable from across the room, which is not true for all displays, and it's forward facing. It disappears after a few seconds of inactivity. I'm completely over strange and top displays, so the C gets a point. Expandability. With the C, there is an expansion option to a 5.1.2 system with the purchase of the 9200S wireless rear speaker kit. I've seen these as low as 100, but they're officially priced at 150 on the Samsung site. The way these work is that you plug in the intelligent wireless receiver speaker and with speaker wire, feed the less intelligent passive speaker. Just a little warning, as these are possibly not as elegant in practice as whatever's going on in your utopian fantasy world. Unfortunately, I don't have them on hand, but expect that they would be generically or moderately helpful in filling out the rear sound, pushing the system a little further. You can also expand the 600C with your newer Samsung TVs using Q-Symphony where the TV speakers remain active and work complementary with Q-series Samsung soundbars like this one. I normally undersell the Q-Symphony option for the flagships that can get plenty immersive and frankly overwhelming by themselves, benefiting less from cheaper speakers chirping in. But for a more limited system that's seeking a boost, it's a heftier BFD having Q-Symphony lurking as an option. The Cinema 600 can also be expanded with the Surround 3 speakers currently priced at 300. The expansion wireless capacity is not built into the bar, so they come with a wireless adapter that is inserted here behind the right wooden end cap. The threes are both powered, so no speaker wire necessary, but you will need an extra outlet. I have the threes and have not been wildly impressed with the connectivity. Dropouts are fairly common, though I haven't tested them extensively in different environments and with different content. So I do not yet endorse them writ large, but I think they deserve some more investigation. There is also a physical sub out port enabling you to bring your own powered sub. Unfortunately, you can't hardwire the Cinema 600 sub because there are no inputs. To clarify, you can run your Cinema 600 sub wirelessly in parallel with your bring your own sub and easily reach troubling base levels, if that's your aim. Maybe your budget is not there to expand right away, but having the option for later is appreciated. Both systems have two substantial expansion options, which is overachieving, two points for each. Sound quality, the Q600C. Good news, I think Samsung has a winner on its hands, particularly considering performance per dollar. 
It transforms your horrific TV sound to not a full surround experience, of course not, but to something that goes way beyond being simply a TV sound enhancer. When I unplugged this system and the sound went back to the TV, the degradation was like a gut punch. I'm still recovering. Always remember how bad TV sound is. The sound profile comes across fairly natural amongst the broader soundbar field with a decent respect for the mids, including the lower mids. There is meat in the sound sandwich, which is often skipped on soundbars at this price point. I'd also say some of that prickly top-end treble mischief, which seems to bother some on the Q900 series, is attenuated on this bar, not as noticeable. Working with eight drivers, I sensed the bar did not have to lean on heavy-handed DSP techniques, as Sony did with the three-driver Atmos-enabled HTG700. The 600C felt well-equipped to play 3D audio. It didn't have to strain or overly distort the sound, to eke out the desired effect. It's not a poser. So yes, you get a highly respectable sense of space up front that extends to the sides, but to a lesser degree. Nonetheless, the sound comes across as big and kinetic when it's called for. A few examples. In Avatar, The Way of Water, when little brother... I want to pronounce the kid's name, but I feel like it's a lose-lose because of the apostrophe. Anyway, when he was fighting the mean fish amongst the water rocks, the fish groans and the water rock smashing was convincing. Mad Max war scenes were angular and impressively immersive. I've heard these scenes many times and on much more expensive soundbar systems, and I still think it sounded pretty impressive on the 600C. Dunkirk, the aerial scene sounded hyper real and was highly directional, which is impressive when you're missing rear speakers. When Q Symphony is introduced, unlike with systems of a higher caliber, I'll admit the overall sound package was often enhanced, credit where it's due. When functioning properly, Q Symphony adds more breadth to the sound and exaggerates some of the 3D effects. Okay, the 600C blocker and why this system may be the one you're gonna skip. See this? It's gonna shock you, but it just doesn't kick all that hard or deep. It performs in a way that sounds reasonably balanced with the bar, and without a side-by-side -side comparison with something more potent, you might deem it adequate, heck, even beyond adequate in its better moments. It's nimble and keeps good time and adds critical contour to the sound, and dramatically expands your TV sound frequency range. Transformative, I'm sticking with that. It's get low limitations, holds this system back from delivering that blockbuster cinema menacing physicality. If there's a fatal flaw in this package, it's that, not that. The Cinema 600, this is the no funny business soundbar. It's well equipped to give you a nice, clear and crisp home theater experience, but not a particularly modern nor spatial one. So there is no specialized spatial DSP that a lot of soundbar makers go for, nor Atmos or DTSX support, nor side firing or upward firing drivers. And the result reflects all these choices. The system does not magically transcend these limitations. The Cinema 600 is one of the most laser beamy bars I've ever heard, even when the surround effect is active, which is more of a quantitative than qualitative difference. It has an earthy, tuned by humans profile. Gonna steal that line again from Andy. Sounds like it was actually designed by human beings with ears. I suspect you'll enjoy the high quality dialogue undergirded by the three driver center channel. I sensed the sweet spot was when the dialogue level was set to one of three. Bringing high vocal intelligibility, particularly in those loud action scenes with minimal sound damage. You even get decent side-to-side -side front audio effects. So think engine revs and bullets whipping left to right kind of noises. But limited by a highly direct sound that is very much confined to the box. You're not getting that cool holodeck bubble here. So yes, the Cinema 600 falls quite short relative to the Q600C in terms of spatial prowess, atmosphere, and lift. Because only lower information codecs are supported, you're not going to pick out nearly as many background details. The lesser sounds that can give a scene intrigue and character come across as suppressed or even missing, 
making the totality of the sound heavier. Rear speakers can provide some relief here, but like I said, they're not incredibly reliable and adding $200 to the cost brings in a more intimidating set of competitors. But I think we all kind of know the base module is where it's at with this system. And good grief, it delivers a categorically different kind of thump than most soundbar kit subs, and in particular, when pitted against the Q600C jewelry box. I mean sub. The Cinema 600 low end after acclimating to the Q600C, well, let's just say my physiology, physiognomy was immediately brought to attention and made to understand that playtime is over. With the Cinema 600, scenes are given more weight and drama. So think rumbling undertones, the big bangs, even the quieter, intimate vocal moments. That being said, this sub is tight and defined. You're not stuck with this undisciplined, lethargic boominess. <laughs> this big boy's got some twinkle in his toes. A few scenes that really got my attention included the Dune opening sequence. I watched it after about an hour of listening to the cue. When I rewatched after switching over to the Cinema 600, it just evoked an <laughs> moment. That sounds very different. Kind of scary. One other fairly random scene that really stuck with me was in Underground 6 at about 23 minutes and 26 seconds when a helicopter was hovering over an explosion. The slow motion rhythmic thump hit really nice and offered an experience that the Q cannot. Though I'd say the most sonically satisfying scene I had with the Cinema 600 this round was one hour and six minutes into Extraction 2 on Netflix where you had this helicopter propeller rhythm along with a meaty machine gun firing sound juxtaposed with glass breaking, all supported with this deep rumble. Pretty intense for a few hundred dollars. The Cinema 600 frequency range, and really talking about the low end, puts the Cinema 600 in a completely different theatrical class than the Q600C. Delivering some of that physicality in a living room or bedroom space that you expect from higher end movie theaters. All right, so what about music? Well, I still really enjoy the Cinema 600's warmth. The delivery is typically satisfying with vocals and instrumentals given a kind of sultriness. I was drawn to many Beatles and Paul Simon tracks and even more modern tracks, let's say post 2010 like Bon Iver, Eight Circle and The National, I should live in salt. Music on the 600C I'd say is worth the effort to explore. If you're used to listening to music from let's say a $200 smart speaker, this is gonna be a major boost. I'd recommend mainly listening via HDMI and using the 600C as a spatial music machine. Why not play to its specialization? If you're an Apple Music subscriber, I'd suggest going to the spatial audio playlist. They lay out a really broad offering of quality but accessible tracks from Bob Marley, 21 Pilots, John Baptiste, Elton John, Billie Eilish, Neil Young, Taylor, Beach Boys. I'm confident you'll find a starting point that sits well with you. As mentioned, there's an effortlessness to this bar that is welcoming and good natured. But again, if you want some of those tracks to get into your chest, they won't get there with this system. It doesn't have the requisite hardware. Both of these systems deserve points for sound quality. I'm actually quite pleased with both for different reasons. However, I'm gonna declare a sound winner and it has a 600 in its name. The Samsung Q600C. Its capacity to render modern Atmos tracks due to its upward firing drivers and broad codec support adds the lift, detail, and texture that I think may be more of a starting point than really deep bass. I know a significant number of you are gonna disagree with me on this, I get it. I'm not gonna push back on the counter argument too hard. But to me, it comes across as the bar most of you would wanna take home if given a choice between the two. The Cinema 600, even giving its charming sound profile and bully bass its due, just leaves too much audio information on the table, flattening content to just a lossy Dolby Digital, which is a little too much to shrug off 
especially when you're straining to hear the more subtle aspects of the scene that the Q600C offered with ease. Bottom line, Samsung strikes a more appropriate, let's say prudent balance in terms of how it distributes its strengths. Five points for Samsung, four for Klipsch. So the final score is not terribly close. My worry came true. I suppose I will need to relinquish the Cinema 600 and replace it with the Q600C. Don't get me wrong, I'm doing this with a bit of heartache because, well, that's sub. But I'm a man, so I'm gonna tough it out. Alternatives, I know there are some Vizios in this price range that are quite popular. I haven't heard them, but was not overly impressed with the Elevate, so I'm a little skeptical. One brand I have yet to review is Yamaha. I have some intuition this brand could make a serious play for my favorite mid-range price soundbar system. You'll just have to pay attention to my channel to find out. And the big elephant in the room. The flagship Klipsch Cinema 1200, at least at the time of this recording, is $800 in the US. Let's just call that the lowest official price point for flagship performance. And based on recent experience with my 1200, the software issues that were not great at launch, but really cluster all over the place after its first major update have been largely dealt with. So I feel comfortable recommending it again. It's a beast. All right, gonna wrap this up. Please help me reach my 20,000 sub goal by 2024 so I can finally debut my 20,000 sub goal dance. Thanks for watching, catch you on the next one. Andy and I have a lot in common. Shirts, a cool person voice. Decidedly monaural and vague. Subscribers. And my wife, like Andrew, spends all her time helping me with my YouTube videos. She would never like vacuum right above me while I'm recording. Trad. Long story short, I'm worried that people are getting our channels confused, so it's time to differentiate. I will do this by reconfirming my commitment to reviewing home audio equipment that responsible people might buy, you know, like those with valid retirement plans.